Hi there, I'm Black Bright, the lighter side of Black Bright, talking about Love Island this afternoon, well this evening, and there was a bit of a cloud over Love Island this evening because of Caroline Flack. May she rest in peace. Um, for those of you who do not know, she was the pre previous presenter on Love Island and she committed suicide on Saturday the 15th of February. Um, we don't know whether it's due to pressure of the media. We do not know whether she had other issues going on. But she did have um, a case going on about abusing her boyfriend. And we don't know how that panned out because he withdrew the charges and the cases were still going ahead. The thing is, we've seen slogans about be kind and all that kind of stuff. People need to educate the media people they need they need to have some sense of responsibility when they invade people's lives and when they cause people to feel worse than they already do it's absolutely terrible what the media does and they should be held accountable you can't go around um, invading people's lives and putting on a public screen. Yes, some people say that's the price of, celeb of celebrityism. That's what some people say. But you draw the line. You don't have to go digging out and trying to pry and hound people and stalk people so that they feel absolutely helpless and alone. It's such a shame. Anyway... That's out of the way. Love Island started off with a cloud and then Shanice and Luke T lifted it. Didn't they just lift the cloud? The cloud. Ah, oh, I think, you know, I think those two genuine article, genuine article. So tender, so loving, so sincere. And, you know, I don't get it. I don't get how a couple can be like that. <laughs> I just don't get it. It's absolutely great. And despite their challenges, you know, they handle it so well. When they have a disagreement, they handle it well. When they get on, they handle it well. I just think it's absolutely phenomenal. So they're boyfriend and girlfriend now. So that's kind of where we left it off from the last show. Um... Natalia and Jamie's first kiss. Um, I don't know. You know, when you're thinking about boundaries, um, you know, those girls were sitting there saying, oh, he asked you for a kiss. He asked for a kiss. Oh, I don't like that. You shouldn't have to ask. But there are such things as boundaries. And in today's, and today, now more than ever, men have got to be so careful about forcing themselves on women. What is interpreted? I mean, you don't know enough. You don't know each other enough to just go in there and lunge with a kiss. You lunge with somebody with a kiss, they might be thinking, oh, I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. You imposed yourself on me. So there has to be boundaries. And Jamie was respecting those boundaries. He had to ask her for a kiss. He's only just met the woman, for Christ's sake. And yes, things move fast in the villa. But he was quite appropriate to do that. And then she's saying, oh, well, shall we do it now? It must be bloody awkward. How do you create a, um, a romantic setting in such a contrived environment? You can't. And yet you want to break down those barriers. You want to be able to feel free to be romantic. And the only way they can do that is by planting a kiss. And so that's what Jamie said. But the thing is, is that I couldn't work out whether or not when she said, oh, I've got to think about it. I mean, and then she was probably thinking, well, if I don't let him kiss me, does that mean I'm not going to look like I like him after I've told him I like him? If I don't let him kiss me, does that mean I might get kicked out of the villa? If I don't, OK, you can kiss me. What was there to think about? Either you want the guy to kiss you or not. Either you like him or you don't. I'm glad they were voted as being the most in disingenuous couple. Because I feel gen um, Jamie was quite genuine. But Natalia, I don't know why she's there. You know, one minute she's all up in the guy. Like she was all up in Luke T. Then she's in the villa. And then, you know, it, things change. So because she didn't want to be booted out of the villa... 
she plays up to Jamie, poor Shauna gets kicked out, and now she's playing her silly games again. I do like the way that Priscilla speaks to Mike. I think she speaks to him with respect, calm, and yet um, in a caring way. It's not in a menacing way. It's not in a nasty way. And yet she puts him in his place. She pulls him up. I really like that. You know, kudos to Priscilla. Like I said, we don't know where that is. But, you know, I think there is something quite strong there. I think if anybody is going to put Mike in his place, even though it kind of goes against her a little bit because she's saying she has to do it in order to get her respect, I don't think it's instinctive for her to do it. So, but she feels as though she's got to do it. I think maybe if she wasn't in the villa, she might have even blown it off as a joke, understanding Mike, who he is. But, because I think he was playing around, and you know, but when you're in the villa, everybody makes a big deal about it. And yeah, um, yeah, he was patting her on the head, like, I mean, they're talking about donkey, a dog, whatever. I mean, to me, it was quite a light-hearted thing to do. But when you've got a whole villa, oh my God, oh my God, you feel as though you've got to address it. And I like the way she made him understand exactly what it was that he did that offended her and made her feel uncomfortable. I thought, I thought that was brilliant. Kudos to Priscilla. And Michael handed it well as well. So kudos to him as well. Um, yeah, kudos to the both of them. What else do I want to say? Finn running off because there's a buck in the bloody bed. What good is he? You're going to bloody if you go into one of these countries where there's bug, is that what you're gonna do? Run off and leave your woman? Supposing it was a tarantula. <laughs> he would run off and leave her to die. Goodness gracious, Finn. Are you a man or a mouse? What else is there? Um they're still playing their word games in the breakfast clubs. Is your belly full? No. But when I get out of the villa, I'm going to get indigestion. But yeah, I think it's still harmless. I don't think Shanice, if she hears that, she's going to be too perturbed. I think it's fine. So, but Luke T, let's... And why do I always ask Luke T? Why can't I ask somebody else in the group? Or why does the camera always hone on to Luke T? It's almost like they're trying to catch him out. It's almost like they want him to make a mistake. Oh, he looks so cute in those little short trousers. I hate those short trousers. But on him, <laughs> he looks so cute. I tell you, he can't do nothing wrong for me. I tell you. Um, let me see what else is there. Jamie, looking good. Um... Let me see what else. Yeah, I think that's all really because, um, oh, let me see who's the least compatible. Who do we think's going? Well, we had Luke Ford chose Luke M and Demi. Don't quote me on it. I'm just because I only decided afterwards to start counting. Uh, it looks like Severin chose Natalia and Jamie. One chose Jess, um, Chad and Jess. Two chose Mike and Priscilla, and one chose Molly and Callum. And I can understand why they were all chosen. Uh, my vote goes for Luke M and Demi, even though I think Demi's not... I'm not too sure about Demi, but I don't want Luke M to go. Not just yet. Um, I'm not even saying, you know, people say he like puts on a little goody-goody. I don't think that is what it is. I think... Um, he needs to find somebody who's not treating him as second best, that he's not a fallback. At the moment, since he's been in the villa, he's been the fall guy. And I want him to find somebody who genuinely likes him for him. That's the only reason why I want him to stay. The others I'm not too fussed about. Mike and Priscilla, they may well work on the outside, um, but they don't provide us with much excitement. Well, this evening, I think, well, I don't know if it's excitement. They do give us a little insight to how two people can communicate effectively. So I think that is good. And when we're watching Love Island, we have to think about what are they teaching us as young as they are? Because we have to remember, 
the oldest in there is 28. So what can we learn from the way they interact with each other, their behaviour, what works and what doesn't? And I think we all need to take something from them. And, you know, I think for young people, they're quite mature, they're quite outspoken. And, you know, Paige, she's very self-assured. Finn, you know, he's grown up in a matter of six weeks. Um, who else is there? Priscilla, she's quite assertive. Mike, he'll probably play it down a little bit now. That he's got all that feedback, so hopefully he'll find that it's not necessary to show off. Um, Callum, he's kind of come out himself a little bit, but still not enough. Uh, Molly, she, I don't know about Molly, because Molly, I still don't get that she's into Callum for some reason. I don't know why, but maybe she's just reserved. But she shouldn't really need that much reassurance. The thing is, people who've watched Love Island, you know what Callum's like. He's not demonstrative. He's very, very much into himself but he's made it clear to her that he likes her so what more does she want it seems like you know some of these women they need so much bloody reassurance it's unbelievable um but i guess it's a part of life we all need a little bit of um reassurance sometimes i guess and i guess in that kind of environment it might be more important but i think if you're with somebody 24 7 what other insurance do you need I mean, he's always hugging her, he's always kissing her, he's always touching her. Sometimes what you don't need the words. Actions speak louder than words. And I don't care what anybody says. If you, if you are attracted to me, and if you have chemistry with me, and if you like me, I should be able to feel it. You don't have to tell me every day, oh, I love you, you're beautiful, and this and that. I should be able to tell from your actions and, you know, the, the odd words and the odd compliments, of course. But I don't think it should be a constant reassurance. Oh, I love you, you're beautiful, every single bloody day. But there again, like I said, they're still young. They probably still need a little bit of validation. They're still going through the game of love. Anyway, that's all for now. I didn't really mean to drag it on so long. So good night. <laughs>